Well, when we talk about uh, livestock safety and specifically beef cattle, uh, the, as we start off the year with a new project, it's important to realize these animals have gone from a pasture setting. They, they haven't been around humans. And so now we've got to get them calm and get them used to, to, to the point where we can tie them and show them at, at these livestock shows. So as we begin the, the halter breaking process, again, safety is first when we're thinking about it. And taking your time, not moving too quickly with the process, that way that the animal will have a good experience with the overall halter breaking process. One thing to always remember is these cattle, they do have good memories. They're just like humans. And, and we as humans, we, we remember bad experiences. So we want to try to make it as as good an experience possible for them because they will remember the bad experiences and, it, and, and if they have a bad experience early on it's going to take longer to get them past that fear than if you started off easy you started off slow working with them. Every animal is different. Every animal has a different disposition. Some of that is just genetic and some of it is how they were raised and, and in the environmental conditions that they were raised in. I think you really have to approach those animals as being different and it takes differences in time. Sometimes these animals, they may not ever be halter broke. Sometimes they have dispositions that are so bad where at some point in time you've got to think about the safety of the exhibitor and also the people that can come in contact with those animals because there are animals that are very poor in their disposition. So sometimes you just have to make the call and say enough's enough. This animal's better off just being out in the pasture rather than a show animal. We need to realize that during the halter breaking process, there are things that we need to be concerned with. One, the sheer size of the animal, around the head, the feet, their hind feet, or if the animal does indeed kick or not, and how close you can get to that animal and getting the animal broke to where it does not kick. And sometimes during the halter breaking process, animals will tend to, to fight you off. They see you as a predator, and so they're trying to protect themselves. And so the procedure is slow and steady, understand the animal, get to know the animal first, and always be aware of where you can get hurt. Again, around the head, the feet, just the sheer body, making sure you don't get pinned up against anything, making sure you don't get tangled up in something as simple as the halter as well. Very minimal uh, things that you need for handling these cattle. Uh, just a simple rope halter. These are about $4 a piece and these work great. They're designed to be put on. Uh, when the animal's tied or being led, they're not designed to be left on the animal at all times. They can get too tight and cause some harm to the animal. The other halter that we utilize is, is our show halter. It's a little bit fancier halter. It's usually made out of leather and it's got a little bit of a chain. And again, we want, want these exhibitors to be able to handle them the best they can. So the halter needs to be put on to where it fits properly. This halter rides just below the eyes and across the nose. If our halter was too big for the animal and sat down on its nose, this young lady would lose control of the animal and just wouldn't be able to, to lead it around and, and, and hold it as, as easily as she is right now. You can see it's got a lead. Typically a lead that's just about <clears throat> two foot long would be sufficient for a show halter lead. And so you wanna make sure that this is trimmed down to where it's just sufficient enough to where the exhibitor has something to hold on to but they don't necessarily get tangled up in it uh, when they're out in the show ring. On many of our projects, we, we've got a, what we term a trim chute. Essentially, it's a restraining device, and it helps us whenever we're working with them, if we've got a clip on them some, or any of those types of things. Uh, most of them have got some kind of head catch. Doesn't really squeeze down on them a lot. It just catches their head to where they can't back up or go forward. Typically, I have some place to tie their head up. You'll notice that the only thing that, that keeps them inside the chute is either horizontal bars or, or vertical bars, and that keeps them from, from walking side to side. You want to make sure it's put on some stable ground to where 
if they're rocking around or moving around, they can't tip it over. The other thing you want to make sure is that trim chute, that it's in good shape. Have that animal either restrained in here with its head tied to here, or if you choose to back the animal out and tie it to here, make sure you've got that animal tied in snugly. The other thing that you got to be really careful with these trim chutes to remember if they move to the side and get on this ground, they can potentially tip over that trim chute. Trying to make sure that they're confined and stay in between the bars, that you've got the bars adjusted according to the animal is extremely important. When we think about the, the halter breaking process, what we're trying to do is get the animal adjusted to you and the surroundings and ultimately reduce that flight zone to zero so that you can have contact with that animal without the animal either running away or fighting or kicking or any of those things. And so start slowly working your way up to them. I like to utilize washing or rinsing. Water simulates the touch of a human. Then you slowly move into potentially utilizing a blow dryer to blow the hair. And then from that point on, you can move into combing and brushing those animals. Oftentimes it's better to, to get them adjusted to the facilities you're in before you even put the halter on those animals. Before we look at the, the temperament of, of cattle and trying to evaluate how they're going to react to the halter breaking process, it's good to figure out and to realize that there's every animal's different. Everyone's going to have a little bit different temperament and they're going to respond to pressure just a little bit differently. And so as we approach these two heifers, the first thing we need to do is try to establish what the actual temperament of the animal is. You can move up and you can get closer and closer over time to where they're comfortable with you. We've got to slowly relay the understanding that we're not going to hurt her. Frequently working with them, the more they're exposed to you, the more comfortable that they're going to be for, with you. If they're not becoming comfortable with you, back off, relieve them a little bit, and then begin the process over again. One thing to remember that that animal is going to be comfortable in the setting that it's in. That animal is going to be comfortable at your house. The animal is going to be comfortable around you. And so we've got to take it a step further than that because at the livestock shows, we've got different setting for that animal, different facilities, a lot of people around that can startle the animal. And so one of the things you can do at home is to have a radio playing for them. So that they've always got something playing in the background, some noise. Uh, another good aspect is to have several people around that animal. So you can simulate kind of a crowd that you would have uh, at the livestock show. But the thing to remember is you always have to be ready to react just in case that animal does react to some kind of noise or sound and jumps. One of the safety concerns that, that we always have when we're working with these, these cattle projects is that these cattle can, can slip uh, depending on the surface they're on. Uh, we've got to remember that their hooves uh, are not meant for, for pavement or, or, or asphalt or, or surfaces that, that don't have some kind of traction associated with it. It should be on a surface that, that's, that they can get some traction, some dirt or some uh, some shavings. One of the things with these the cattle is if, if they get away, they've got the understanding and they think they can always get away. And so if you've got some good surface, you can really control them a lot better. And always remember as we move these animals around and we move into some surfaces that may not be as conducive to leading cattle, we always have to be very careful that we don't turn them sharply we don't try to move them real fast. Certainly try to minimize the, the chance that they're gonna be uh, startled or jump or make some kind of uh, adverse reaction. Whether it be at home or in the show ring, the exhibitors need to make sure that they keep some distance between them and the heifer in front of them or behind them or, or on the side of them. And usually a general rule of thumb is about one calf's length in between, uh, that way the exhibitor doesn't get too close to the rear legs of the animal and put them into a dangerous situation. So making sure that they've got some distance in between, as you can see here, helps to reduce the risk that there could be a, a potential bumping in of, of two different animals. 
One thing we've got to remember about these beef cattle projects, uh, they start off when the kids purchase them in that four to 500 pound range. And then as that animal matures and develops over time, we'll develop it into a, a 12 to 1800 pound animal in the end. With these smaller kids, you need to make sure that those animals are extremely docile. And then you also need to work with that exhibitor to, to show them how to move that animal properly around. It's easy for those kids to be stepped on and also talk to them about things that could happen and how they can prevent being pinned under an animal, those kind of things. So they can handle it and these younger kids do a good job at it, but they just have to be really careful with these projects. One of the concerns always whenever you're dealing with these projects is we've got to be concerned with kicking. The biggest thing is you want to make sure that that animal knows that you're there. If you run up to it and it's startled, it may think that there's a predator after it. And so whenever you're doing that, slowly work your way up and you want to stay fairly close and always be aware that animal could kick you at any time. Uh, they don't kick straight to the back. The way that they do kick is they kick out and around and they can actually bend and potentially even kick you up at the front end, if, even if you were standing here, all the way back and even behind those animals. Some of the most compromising position that we can be in is gonna be whenever we're working with these animals down here because there's a potential for them to, to kick you in the head. There's always the potential to be kicked. You've just gotta be careful. Don't make any sudden movements around them. If you got multiple people working on those animals, make sure that they don't just come up on that animal, that they get that animal used to them first, and then you start working together with them. When you approach the animal to begin to halter it, make sure that the animal knows that you're there, that it's comfortable with you being there, you don't startle it. But once you've gained the, the attention of the animal and the animal's comfortable with it, then you can proceed with putting that halter on. You can put it around the back of the ears first, or you can put it uh, over the nose, either or. The main thing that you want to do from a safety perspective is make sure that you don't get wrapped up in the halter, and if the animal was startled, it could drag you. A couple of things when we're thinking about tying these animals. Uh, first and foremost, we want to make sure wherever we're tying them is sturdy. We want to be careful when we're tying these animals that we try to, to tie them to something that has some height as well. If this was a short fence, potentially, and we tied the animal there, if it was startled or tried to jump, it could jump up and, and get hung up on that, that, that shorter fence. During the halter breaking process, initially, the first time you tie them up, it may not be ideal to tie them extremely high like that. You may want to start off and tie those animals down low, down to the ground, to where they'll prevent injuring themselves. Always be concerned and be aware that they could lunge or jump at any time and potentially pin your, you between them and this panel and possibly get hurt. Whenever you're tying the animal, utilize a knot that if the animal goes down or potentially needs to be untied quickly, you've got a knot that you can just slip right out and that animal can be untied easily. If you do get an animal that is fighting the rope and fighting it really hard, if it's really throwing a fit, don't put yourself in a position that can compromise your safety. Sometimes the tension can be too tight and you may not be able to untie that knot. And so if that happens, you kind of have to have a way out because the animal may have gone down. These ropes are really thick. And so a dull knife would have a hard time going through it. Ideally a knife with some kind of serrated edge that you can cut through it easily and quickly would be ideal. The thing to remember though is that animal's in distress and you've got to be extremely careful because you could easily Cut yourself, cut the animal. If the animal lunges and jumps, you could easily stab yourself with a knife as well. So again, you've always got to expect the unexpected, unexpected in whatever position that, that, that happens with these, these cattle. 